Is Texas a no-fault divorce state? Yes, that is an option. The thing is, just because it could be a no-fault divorce does not mean it has to be a no-fault divorce. Here's what I mean. In Texas, you can, when you file your initial paperwork with the court, that's called a petition. In your petition, you do have to list the grounds for divorce. And the no-fault reason that we use is on the grounds of insupportability. Whenever I say it, I feel like I should like have an English cup of tea or something. You're like, grounds of insupportability, thank you. And what that really means is like that irreconcilable differences thing you see on movies, that's the the gist, right? Like we just don't get along. All right, that's law speak for we ain't getting along. We're fighting too much, okay? Now, you can also file for fault grounds in Texas. And you may want to consider doing that in a few limited circumstances. The number one one you've heard of and why you may be watching this video is on the grounds of infidelity. That means cheating on each other. All right. And technically in Texas, if you if the court finds that there was fault in the breakup of the marriage, the court can technically give you more money in the divorce. If your attorney pleads for what's called a disproportionate share, meaning more of the money, then you can get it if the court finds that you were at fault. Now, you don't even have to get me started on my opinions about that. I don't really think it's the state's business on why marriages are breaking up, but nobody asked me in Austin when they were making the rules. I just learn how they work and learn how to apply them in your situation. But you can apply as no fault. And I don't know, like nine times out of 10, nine and a half times out of 10, we do. Um, but Fault is an option. There are some other things like cruelty, but don't think like this guy or this gal is a real jerk, like not that kind of cruelty. Think like, you know, domestic violence kind of cruelty. The case law on that is like, it's got to be pretty bad, essentially. The one, only ones I really ever see outside of a domestic violence context would be infidelity or irreconcilable differences. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to plead for fault in the breakup of the marriage, I want you to keep in mind two things. Number one, do you have the facts to prove it? Because here's the thing, you're not going to be able to just say infidelity because I think so. Because I found, I don't know, I, I had a feeling in my heart. This is what a lot of women were guilty of saying, like, I just, I just can sense it. Well, the court is not going to give you more of the estate because you can sense it. Do you have text messages? Do you have recordings? Do you have a picture of them doing this and that? Do you have hotel flights and things booked? Do you have a private investigator who even took videos, right? Like you've got to be able to prove it. The second thing I want you to be thinking about is you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. All right. Once you put out there for God and everybody that this person was in faith, unfaithful in your marriage, you're not going to be able to take that back. And this is a public record. Like someday your kids are going to be able to access that document. Do you really want that out there for the whole world to see? What if it comes out like that you were wrong? You had it all wrong. You just had a misunderstanding. That still lives out there. And like a more practical reason is you get more flies with honey right? So if you go out there and you come out guns blazing and accusing them of all of this in the beginning, you're going to have a harder time walking that back and bringing down the temperature in your divorce, which we're always trying to do. We want to bring the temperature down because kids fare better, parties fare better, you spend less in legal fees, your divorce goes faster. But if you're like coming in hot, the temperature in your divorce is going to be high it's going to be a hot divorce, and that's going to cost you a lot more money, a lot more heartache, a lot more time. I don't want that for you. I know the best part of you doesn't want that for you. You may be in a spot where you're really, really hurt. Your heart is breaking because you did find out that this person cheated on you, and that hurts, and it sucks. And doing something feels better than doing nothing. But I'm just going to tell you, the divorce process is not the place to get closure. It's not the place to heal. That's not where this is going to happen. And so whenever you want to take out that anger, you want to get revenge, you want everybody to know what they did to you, I'm telling you, it's one of those things that you're going to pursue. And generally speaking, I, I don't know that this has ever been not true. At the end, you're going to be feeling unsatisfied. You're not going to get what you want out of that process. And it's going to cost you so much more throughout the process. And your kids, God forbid, it's going to make it so much worse. Filing for a fault 
and laying all somebody's stuff bare for God and everybody to see on the whole entire internet, um, generally speaking, is not going to bring peace and calm and moving forward in your life, which I think is what the, the real you inside of you underneath that hurt, underneath that pain, that's what you actually want and are looking for. So if you found this video, maybe let it just be one little reminder to just take a step back take a deep breath, and let's keep the temperature down. There are other ways to heal. There are other ways to ease the pain. There are other ways to move forward and move on that don't involve dragging your entire family through the mud and costing yourself a whole bunch in attorney's fees, okay? Let's try the other way.